Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make a tower defense game. I've looked online on other tutorials, and they're a bit confusing and complicated, so I decided to make an easier one. That being said, let's get started. First, let's create a new project. Go ahead and edit it. Create a game scene. Now let's create the script for the game. First, create these variables. We have a variable for the money, what wave we are on, how many mobs left in that current wave, are the amount of mobs in each wave. Each one is a wave, and the wave speed, this is how fast they spawn each, each wave. Save the scene, and let's get on to the actual tower. You want to add two sprites, one for the tower itself, and one for the head of the tower. Create two area 2Ds, each with a collision shape. The first one with a circle collision, and the second with a box collision. Make sure the sphere one has a good range. Input the tower sprite for each one, and let's get onto the code. Create a new script in the tower node. Create these two variables, one referencing the tower head, and the other creating an array for the enemies. It will be added to this list, and every time it leaves, it will be erased from this list. Go to the first area 2D and connect the area entered to the script. If area dot is in group enemy, then enemies dot append area. If an enemy is in our site, then add the enemy to the enemies list. We're doing the same thing here, but instead of adding the area, we are erasing it from the list. Create a new variable called current enemy. We will store the current enemy that we are looking at in this variable. If enemies is not equal to nothing, then the current enemy is going to be equal to the first enemy in the list. Then we want to look at the enemy. Speaking of enemies, we should probably make one right now, so let's do that. Go back to your game world and add a path 2D node. We can use this path 2D node to make our enemy follow a certain path. If we add a path follow node into the path 2D node, we can change the offset. This is how we're going to move our enemy in the game. Delete that path follow node and instead create a new scene with the path follow node as its root. If we click the warning sign, it says a path follow 2D only works when set as a child of the path 2D node. We can ignore this because we're going to instance this into this path 2D node later. Add your enemy sprite into the scene and make sure the collision shape fits perfectly. If you want these sprites, you can go into the link in the description. The whole project will be there and all its files. Go into the groups section and name this enemy. We can use this later to see if what we're shooting is actually an enemy. Make these two variables. Health is equal to 5, speed is equal to 30. You can change the health to whatever you want, and you can change the speed to whatever you want. In the physics process function, type this code, offset plus equals speed times delta. This will change the offset by its speed times in the delta, so it works on all screens. If offset is greater or equal than 10,000, then Q3. This means the enemy has reached the end of the path. Save the enemy scene. First, create two timers, one called wave timer, and the other enemy timer. Set the wave timer to one shot. Then connect the timeout function to the script on the wave timer. Mobs underscore left is equal to wave mobs wave. Mob timer dot wait time is equal to wave speed wave. Mob timer dot start. This will set the mobs left to the current wave. This will also make this mob timer wait time to the current wave's time. Then it will start the mob time. Connect the timeout function to your script. Add these two variables, the instance variable we use to instance scenes, and the enemy to preload the enemy scene. Instance the enemy, add the enemy to the path 2D node, take away one from the mobs left variable, so if it was 5, it will be 4 now, and it will keep doing that until it reaches 0. Then we'll know to go to the next wave. Else get tree dot change scene to the win scene that we'll create later make sure to have a zero on the end of the list when this wave starts it will go to the win scene instantly which won't be good so the wave time will go you'll have three seconds to place your things down the wave will start when the mob is left is equal to zero whereas all the mobs is spawn it will go to the next wave and start the wave time again so it waits three seconds and as you can see, the enemies spawn every second for the first wave. Five mobs, one, two, three, four, five. Then for the next one, 
it would wait, go six. Now add the tower to the scene. If we add the tower to our scene, the head will follow the enemies as they go past. As you can see, it's following the enemy. As it leaves, it goes to the other ones. And yeah. Now let's make the tower shoot. Go back into the tower scene and create a new shooting timer. Name the shoot timer, connect the timeout function to your script, make a new variable called bullet and we'll preload this bullet. We'll create the bullet scene later. Now add this code into the timer. If there is a current enemy, then if there is enemies, then current enemy is equal to the enemy it should be looking at, then create a variable bullet dot instance that will instance the bullet. Set the global position to our global position. Set the target to the current enemy. Get the world scene and add the child. Now let's create the bullet scene. Set an area 2D as its root node. In the group section, add the term bullet. Add a sprite, visibility notify 2D, and a collision shape 2D. I have a bullet sprite here, so I'll use this as a texture. It's very small. Save the bullet scene and create a script in the new bullet scene. Add these variables. Add the move vector, the speed, the look vector, and the target. If the target is not null, so if the target is not empty, make the sprite look at the target and make the look vector look at the target. Set the move vector to zero. Use the inbuilt Godot function move toward to move toward where it's looking at. Normalize it, normalize the move vector, times it by the speed, and then global position plus equals move. Now make the bullet go towards the enemy. As you can see, this makes sense now because we're getting the target and sending it to the current enemy. Make sure to set the shoot timer to auto start. And now if you play the scene, it should shoot at the ship. And when it leaves sight, it will go shoot at the other ships. Go to the visibility notifier and choose and connect the screen exited function to the script. Write Q3. This function deletes the node. Now let's add it so you can build stuff. First create a canvas layer. Add any button of your choosing. And I have some textures here for the button. Now we have a clickable button. Connect the press function to the game script. Type in instance is equal to tower.instance. Add child instance. Preload the tower scene into this tower variable that we have here. Create a building variable to see if you're building or not. Add this if statement to check if building is equal to false and your money is greater or equal to 25, then you'll instance it. Create a new function called tower built. Building is equal to false and money take away $25. We'll run this function every time we place a tower. Lastly, we want to create a label that so we can see how much cash we have. Use the process function that plays every frame and set the text to cash colon plus string money. This will convert the integer of money into a string and add it onto here, showing it like this. So in our tower script, we also have to have a building variable to see if we're building or not. So we're going to create a building variable up here and set it to true, because every time we spawn one, then we'll want to build it first. At the top of the physics process function, do if building is equal to false, then we know we're not building, so then we can do this. We want to set our global position to the mouse position. We want to check if we click then we want the building equal to false then we want to run the tower built function that we created earlier add the if building equal to false here here and here go to your project settings go to the input map and create a new action called click press plus and choose the mouse button and choose the left mouse button now if we play this and we click the button we have a tower and we can place it and then it will shoot to make it so the bullet actually hits the enemy, go to the enemy scene, connect the area entered from the area 2D, then type in this code. This will check if the area is a projectile, if it is, then it will delete the projectile, it will change the health by negative 1, and we can check if the health is equal to 0 or lower than 0, and we're going to add 10 to the money, and kill the enemy. Go to the bullet, go into node, go to groups, and add the projectile group right here. Now if we spawn a tower and hit the enemy three times, we'll add 10 cash and delete itself. Now we want to make it so the tower only spawns on the asteroids. Create a new scene with area 2D as its 
brute, call it platform, add a collision shape and a sprite. Add in your sprite here and choose the collision shape 2D as a rectangle. Save the scene and just duplicate the platforms and add them into your scene. Go to your tower script and add a new variable called can place. We'll change this if we can place it or not. Now go to your placement area 2D. We want to connect area entered and area exit. Once we connected those, type in if area dot is in group platform, if building is equal to true, then can place is equal to true. Do the same for the exited, but change can place equal to false. Go to your platform and add the group platform. Go to your tower script and type in. Now when we play the game, we can't place the thing wherever we want, we have to place it on the asteroid. We can place multiple turrets and when the wave ends it finishes. To finish it off we need to create a wind scene. So you can just create a wind scene, use a color rec as full rec, make it whatever color you want and add in some text when you win. To make it better you can add a, another sprite to show the range and in the script modulate it and change it visible when you're over something or not over something. Like this. I also added a path here so you can see where the path is going. And you can make everything your own. And that's it guys, thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed this video then be sure to leave a like, comment for more tutorials if you want. You can follow me on Twitch, I do streams there most Saturdays. I make games on itch.io, you can go check them out. I also have a Discord server you can join, just go down in the description. All the links are in the description. Thank you for watching and goodbye.